Uh, this quick video is going to demonstrate to you the idea with a nested for loop. Um, in order to do that, we're going to start off with a normal for loop. Just want to quickly draw the flow diagram of it. So in a normal for loop, you have some kind of initialization, and then you have a logic check. And if the logic check gives you true, you're going to perform certain statements. Then you're going to do an increment. And after that increment, it'll go back and it will check again. So in here you have statements. So this is just a normal for loop. This condition, I'm just going to do as an example. This is typically something like well, x less than 20, or something similar. So while it's true, it's going to loop. It's going to perform the statement increment check. Perform the statement increment until it's false. When it does the check and it's false, it is false. It's going to drop out. So I'm just going to redraw this as a bit of a more um, easy to read flow diagram as an initialization that has a logic check. If the logic check gives you a true, so x is less than 20, for example, it gives you true. What we then do is statements. some instructions that we have there and as soon as those instructions are done we have um, the increment and then it goes back in here and does the check again this is just a different way of drawing the same thing okay it's exactly the same I'm drawing it like this because we're going to use this approach to illustrate the embedded, embedded check all right so let's let's use that I'm just going to make a snapshot of that so we can come to it back later there we go so let's use that to now do the embedded if oh, embedded control uh, for loop so your embedded for loop has an initialization and as a demonstration I'm just going to make this row is equal to zero then you have a logic check is row less than five for example if it's true i want to perform some action after that i will do the increment so row plus plus and when that is done go back and check again is row greater than five if it's false it drops out and you're done that's your, your first for loop. Now, inside here is where would have gone your statements. And part of this statement here, or this plus statement, will now be another for loop. So inside this here, we're going to make another for loop. So the first thing that happens with any for loop is initialization. So let's make this variable column. Column is equal to zero. Don't worry about the names now. I'm just demonstrating um, a nested for loop. So it checks something, and this something that it checks is column less than five. If it is, it's going to go, yes, column is less than five. I need to perform certain statements. So it performs statements, then it does an increment, and this increment will be column plus plus. When it's done that, it goes back and checks again. All right, if it's false, it drops out and it continues with the remainder of what it needs to do. So this is a for loop with another for loop embedded into it. This statement here that we have could be anything like printf, for example. So let's just put statement here. Statement. So that's what we're going to do now. and We're going to do that in code. So what I want to demonstrate to you is um, let's go to Eclipse and let's make our variables int row um, and column and I'm going to have a for loop I'm going to make row is equal to zero that's my initialization you can see that there row is equal to zero that's the first thing that happens um, then I make uh, is row less than five that's my condition you can see the condition here and if it's true let's just put a t there for true T there for true and an F for false and an F for false. If it's true, I want something to repeatedly be done or to be done yet again. 
and then the increment is I want row to be incremented by one. What do I want this thing to do? I'm going to put in curly braces just so that we know what we're talking about. Um, I want this thing to repeatedly do something. This something is a for loop. So I want it to do a for loop and I'm going to use the second variable which might as well have been called i or whatever, i or j or pete. Um, column is equal to zero, so that's my initialization. You can see the initialization there. And then continue while column is less than five. By the way, this five is totally arbitrarily chosen, arbitrarily chosen. And column increment is my increment. So what do I want this internal for loop to do repeatedly? I want this thing to do something, and the something is that statement there. So I'm not entirely sure what that statement is. Let's just say I want this thing to do um, printf percentage d percentage d um, yeah that's good and a space and we're going to print out row and column. Right, so what we expect to see now is we need we expect something to repeat. Let's look at this internal loop. This thing will go from 0 to 4, so less than 5, 0 to 4, it will 5 times do this print. But then that 5 times will be done a number of times, and that number of times is 4 times yet again. So what I expect to see is I expect to see 4 times 4, I expect to see 16 times something being printed out and that something is row and column so if you could just tolerate me for one second let's just do this this then should print out 16 asterisks there we go there's your 16 asterisks now I'm asking you to print out row and column explicitly every time so I'm expecting it to do that 16 times so what you can see here is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and then 1, 0. And this is obviously my row and column. So what you can see is row is 0 for 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, I said 16. I meant 25. It's 0, 2, 4. It's 5 times 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's once, twice, thrice, 4 times, 5 times. 5 times, it prints out that row is equal to zero then five times it prints out that column is equal to uh, sorry that row is equal to one then five times it prints out that row is equal to two and for the whole duration where row is equal to zero you can see column is zero one two three four and then again um, column is equal to zero one two, three, four, while row is equal to one. So what happens here is row is equal to zero, and for row is equal to zero, for that first value, this thing is repeated five times, and column is incremented by one every time. And that's why you see zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four. When it's done this, it drops out of the for loop, does that increment there, and then checks again. Is row still less than 5? If it is, do this. And this is again a repetition. So it does increment row, row becomes 1, and then for that 1, do this 5 times again. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, etc. So what you can see is, if you wanted to print this out to be rows and columns, if you wanted to, you could have said, let's just say we want after each 5 columns we want to put a new line so after this has done five columns after the inside one has done five I just wanted to make a new line you could have just said printf new line like this what will that do that'll stick a new line in there and a new line in there and a new line in there so let's just see what that does very nice so now you can see how this whole thing hangs together. If you wanted to, you could actually just make it a bit clearer if you wanted. Um, column is equal to, just so that we can get the knack of this. 
So I'm just saying what's row and what's column's value every time. Row 0, column 0, row 0, column 1, row 0, column 2, etc. And then the row increments here, and here you can see we're at row 4, comma 5. So now, um, let me just say all of these things work the same. All of these pattern printing things work the same. So what we want to figure out now is we want to figure out a way to make this print different things for different scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this print out and uh, let's make it the number E just to be silly. So what I expect to see now is a square of E's. There we go. Okay, so five times it prints E, new line, E, new line, E, new line. Five times it does this. And to get those E's next to each other, it has this internal loop five times as well. There's the new line. So let's say I didn't want to always print E. I sometimes want to print 3. Then what I want to do is I need to choose. Sometimes I want to print 3. Sometimes I want to print E. So now the question is how do I, how do I make... How do I make a program choose between two options? What's the control structure that you know to make it choose? And the answer is really simple. You use if. And you need to use some logic condition to choose 3. And then some alternative is to print E. So if a certain condition is met, it'll print 3. Otherwise, it will print E. So now we just need to choose the logic. So let's just say if... Let's, want, let's say we want to make the middle row equal to 3's rather than E's. So we say if row is equal to 2, 0, 1, 2, then print F3. And we need the double equals to do the comparison. So that should give us 3's there. Can you see that? Let's say we want to make the middle column equal to that. So... There we go. The model column is now equal to 3. Let's say we want to only make it 3 if column is equal to row. And I'm sorry about the, the selection of 3 here. It might be confusing all the numbers. So now you can see you have along the diagonal 3 and then the rest is equal to E's. Now obviously you can change this to be pluses and like that. Exactly the same thing. The key here is to understand that, let's just do another one quickly, asterisks and spaces, they all look exactly the same. It's exactly the same problem every time. The key is to understand that you need to choose the logic that sets what prints when, and you have two for loops. The outer loop does the rows. So the outer loop increments the rows, and you need to put a new line to go into the new out to the new line, and the inner loop does the columns every time. So let's just do an interesting one here. Um, let's make it print pluses if column is greater than row. There we go. Or let's just flip the logic. If column is this less than low, what does it do? There we go. All things bright and beautiful. Okay, so what you can see here is now we can do silly things. So we can say if column is equal to 0 or column is equal to 4 or now let's just stop there for now. So now we expect column 0 and column 4 to give us pluses and the rest to be asterisks. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And let's just make it x's for fun. There we go. And let's say we want to make row 0 um, pluses as well. Row is equal to 0 and row is equal to 4. So that should give us a nice frame around our little beastie thing. There we go. All as well. So let's just talk through it one more time. If row is equal, uh, well, let's, let's just make this thing enter from the top. Let's talk through it. So what happens is the computer sees it needs to allocate two variables, row and column. Then it sees it needs to perform an initialization 
and a logic check. Do something if the logic check is true, increment, and then check the logic again. That's what a for loop does. So it knows to initialize. So it initializes first thing, row is equal to zero now. So while row is equal to zero, it checks this. Is row less than five? Yes, it is. So it enters in here. So row is still equal to zero now, and now it says it's another for loop. First thing to do with the for loop is make this variable equal to zero. So now row is zero, column is zero. Check this column is less than five. Yes, it is. If it is, do this. Is column equal to zero? Yes. So this whole thing will return a true anyway, because any one of these need to be true for an OR operator to return true. So it'll print in plus, plus. Drops out of the if, because it's already done the true part. It doesn't need to even look at the false part. And then it does, um, it reaches this end of the for loop here. When it reaches this point, it does the column plus plus, that. So column is now equal to one. So it goes in, check column again. Is column less than five? Uh, yes, one is less than five. Then it says, is column equal to zero? No, it's not. Is column equal to four? No, it's not. Is row equal to zero? Yes, it's still equal to zero. So it should print a plus. So it prints that, that plus there. And um, when it reaches this point, it increments yet again column. It becomes uh, two, etc. It goes up to five. And if this is 5, that check there doesn't pass anymore. It fails. So it drops out, prints a new line. So it goes from there to here, uh, to that new line there. And as soon as that is done, it gets to this point, which is where row is incremented by 1. So now row is equal to 1. Row is equal to 1, enters this for loop, or sorry, checks the condition first. So is 1 less than 5? Yes, it is. So it goes in here. Then it says, okay, what does a for loop need to do? A for loop needs to, first of all, set column equal to 0. So now we have row is equal to 1, column is equal to 0. Check, is 0 less than 5? Yes, it is. Enter here, is column equal to 0? Yes, it is. Print an F. So it prints that F there. Reaches this point, increments column, so now we have row is equal to 1, column is equal to 1, so they're both equal to 1. So is 1 less than 5? Yes, it is. So it comes in here, is column equal to 0? No. Is column equal to 4? No. Is column row equal to 0? No. Is row equal to 4? No. So all of these are false, so the OR operator returns a false as well. So it does not do the true part, it does the false part, and the false part says print an X, so it prints that X. And that's really how the whole thing hangs together, that's how it works.